All right, and let me go ahead and welcome to the stage here, uh, Real Misha um, from Popcorn Dow. I'm going to send an invite for you to come join me on the stage, friend. Hello, hello. How's it going? Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, man. Uh, pleasure to be here. I'm going to take a screenshot of this and share it on my, on my LinkedIn, if that's okay. Just give me one second. Of course, of course. And we do have... Um, some on-screen assets that were shown on the live stream on YouTube. So uh, feel free to drop me any links in a DM if you want me to like toss something up on screen. I can do that easy. All right, one second. Might as well send me the app. Uh, launched Butter, which I'll go into in a bit. Sweet, man. Yeah, I saw that. I had a chance to visit the app. Very cool. I'm ready to rock, though. Let's go. <laughs> All right, let's do it, man. Excellent. Well, I would like to just hear your background story, man. I know you're a co-founder of, of Pop Count, Popcorn Dow here, but uh, what's your story? How'd you get into crypto, um, and how did your road lead you to uh, to popcorn? Yeah, so where do I start? I guess I'll start from the beginning. Um, so I come from trad traditional finance. I used to work at Credit Suisse and private banking, switched over to, to big tech at SAP and worked in digital, digital strategy. And like a lot of us in the space in 2016, I'd read the Ethereum white paper uh, and was actually introduced to Bitcoin in 2011, 2012. And I remember at the time I was doing my master's in economics and finance and I, I uh, well, I didn't read what I needed to read and I completely dismissed it. And then when I found Ethereum in 2016, the way I first understood it was this programmable blockchain or this, this Bitcoin that you could issue tokens off of and create token economies. That's literally how I understood it. Um, several months later, I, I wrote my own white paper, more so in support of my, my previous business partner who uh, was uh, an attorney for a large firm that was representing some pretty despicable people in the pharma space, uh, i.e. Sackler family. So he had an ex existential crisis. He was a really good friend of mine from college. And uh, he, you know, we, we both invested in Ethereum quite early. And we just, we, we realized that we needed to, to build on it. We needed to figure out what it is that actually we, we invested in, like, more so. And we thought the best way of doing that was uh, starting something. And so at that time, uh, I would say, like, we were in a good position to, to leave our jobs and and proceed with this idea that he had, which was this uh, this DAO or this, well, this DAO for, for accelerating drug discovery, but also a, a new way of funding and licen licensing bio R&D. So we took a look at the pharma space and we saw how uh, inefficient it was in terms of the amount of money that pharma was pumping into drug discovery and how long it took um, the monopoly that pharma had on drugs in general. And my partner, he just knew a whole lot about um, getting certain drugs past phase one or phase two without even going to phase one and phase two. Uh, and I don't, I don't want to go into the weeds of pharma too much, but uh, basically just in general, accelerating drug discovery. And ultimately, we ended up contributing to the, what the, NF, or the, the NFT before the NFT the ERC-1155, which fractionalized intellectual property ownership of, uh, of anything basically on chain. And we created the, the first DAO that was for the purpose of uh, the scientific community or for, 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 for the scientific community to, uh, to accelerate drug, dis drug discovery. And I think there's another project that um, sort of carried or took the baton after called Vita DAO, um, which uh, they're doing some pretty interesting things. Yeah. But anyways, I worked on that project for for three years, and it was a great learning experience. Um, ultimately, DeFi summer happened, and I was a very early farmer of some of the the blue chip DeFi protocols out there. Nice. Uh, and so I actually, by the end of 2020, thought that I wanted to get out of crypto because it was just just too much for me. I wanted to move to Miami and I actually 
got a job for this company called Reef Technology that um, buys parking lots and turns them into like ghost kitchens, basically. That's what that's what it seems like they're doing right now. Oh, um, right. So my friend was a creative, yeah, my, my friend was a creative director right there and he, and he helped me get the job. But at the same time, I was proposed this idea of essentially a yearn for good. Or that's, that's when I read the white paper that uh, Anthony, my, my partner and founder, um, Popcorn, had sent to me, that's, that's the way I understood it. So um, essentially using like the, the DeFi um, source radio, let's call it, and applying it to also creating positive global impact at the same time. And I thought that idea was, it was a big idea. I think it was like in the same vein as my last project as well. So definitely like very disruptive, however difficult and naive um, in terms of building the, the tech out. Uh, I, I just thought it was, it was a great idea. But also at the same time, this was like in the middle of the bull run in 2000, early 2021. And I knew a lot of venture capital or a lot of investors out there were just looking for like the next hundred you know, to a thousand X or whatever. And, but I had accumulated a, a, quite a substantial network over the years um, in the VC space as well as just like in, in, the, in the Ethereum uh, ecosystem. So anyways, we, we had raised an early round pretty fast, put together a team, uh, participated in some hackathons, had the Chainlink hackathon, global, we uh, did another round, and then we launched a token at the end of the year. And you know, we're we're a pretty lean team right now, but uh, we're very much on our way in what we set out to do in early 2021. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I mean, I can see the the yearn for good um, as an inspiration here. And can you dig in a little more about the sort of the for good side? Like, how 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 do you envision, well, how did you envision, and then maybe how things are panning out now in terms of, you know, the flow of, of, of yield or capital or um, two good causes? I mean, how does that component work? Can you share a little more on that? Yeah, and, and just to give you a bit more context, I mean, the pitch really is, you know, Popcorn is, is an on-chain wealth manager that offers exposure to, to products and asset strategies built in-house that can earn yield on your crypto assets, but also donate to charities, community selected charities, uh, at the same time at no additional cost. So we make it super simple for you to deposit your crypto, optimize your yield, uh, and, and create impact by, by donating to those charities that uh, Popcorn DAO selects. And as a POP token holder, uh, you're required to stake it and then to, to participate in our beneficiary governance and grant elections. So it's very much the community that decides on which organizations we we donate our earned protocol fees to. So, in the next couple of months, the the governance aspect of Popcorn, which I think is is really the the, the novel um, product that we're building, because the, the on the DeFi side, it's very much uh, you know, our, for example, our, our first product, Butter, is a yield optimizer, and we use Curve and Yearn and infrastructure. So we we make it a lot easier and cheaper for anyone that wants exposure to a diversified basket of stable coins to earn yield on our to earn yield via like automated yield farming on on yearn for those curve lp tokens but um so that, that's that's the DeFi side and then you'll be able to vote uh on on the beneficiaries going forward and you'll you'll even be incentivized to do so with pop rewards so there is a if you read the white paper um, you know, really early on, I think we were one of the first to like borrow the curve Vnomic or vote escrow model, mm -hmm. apply it to the the beneficiary, the philanthropy side of what we're doing. And actually, we didn't really talk about what we could do in terms of directing emissions or voting on emissions for for products that we release as well. And so that's that's part of the roadmap um, as well. So it's uh, it's all essentially being rolled out right now. Very cool. Can, can we dig into the governance side just for a second? So you're, if you're a pop holder, um, you need to stake those tokens in order to gain access to the governance to participate. Is that correct? That's, that's ultimately the plan. Right now, uh, since we're still building out the, the governance as, or the governance piece of it, um, 
we do all of our well we submit all of our votes and proposals on, on snapshot actually we start uh we start in quorum and then if there's uh, essentially community approval or good sentiment then we put, push it into snapshot and then we, sure we obliged the outcome of the vote and, and are you saying that sort of the intention is to, to you're building out an in-house governance component that maybe will be a part of the DAP, or how do you think that that'll end up uh, presenting? Yeah, ex exactly. So you'll need you'll need to stake the pop token um, or lock the pop token in order to participate in the governance. Okay, very good. And so and so the DAO itself will um, direct a portion. Now, is this a portion of of pop emissions or uh, it, I'm, I'm trying to circle back then to like the question of um, I understand the DAO and voters will choose you know projects or you know I, I assume any do good organization like they'll identify evaluate and then direct um, certain you know revenue to them or a certain uh, portion of, of funds but are those funds going to be in the pop token or is this like a different sort of arrangement um, for you know flows to uh, philanthropic organizations yeah, good question. So the infrastructure is such that the earned protocol fees flow into a rewards contract, which then distributes the funds through a community vote. Uh, nice. So the top tokens, will, you'll need to, to lock them in order to participate in, in the nomination for the beneficiary as well as the grant election. And, and that's, uh, I mean, it, actually, if, if you take a look at like what we're doing um, comparatively to the rest of the, you know, the DeFi primitives and protocols out there, uh that's that's the novel piece of, of popcorn the fact that we can do this um and we essentially have minimized or try to minimize the amount of friction that it would take to to actually donate uh fees so the the products and the apys that you're or the um you know the, the interest that you're earning on your crypto assets on popcorn none of that is sacrificed it's the fees that you would typically pay to or typically uh, pay let's say on Yearn or Curve, and what we do is we just direct the, a portion of those to uh, the rewards contract, as well as to the stakers, to our treasury, and, uh, and to carbon offset, offsets as well. I got it. Okay, so this is all coming out of the, the, the fee structure here. Very cool. Yeah. Um, you mind if we head, could we hop over to the DAP now and chat a little bit about what people can find? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Um, how do we do this? Well, so I'll, I'll, I'll get it up on screen here. And for everybody who's listening, um, popcorn.network, okay, is what's going to take you to the homepage. You can find the white, white paper and all those good details. Popcorn.finance, um, you can access it from the original homepage. But if you want to type it straight in, folks, popcorn.finance is where you'll find what you see on screen right now. So I got it up here. Um, would you want to start? Is there butter staking? Is there some place you'd like to start? Maybe give it like a short explainer of the, the DAP here? Sure. I'll walk through everything. So it's actually popcorn DAO, popcorn D A O dot finance. Ah, yes, my bad. Yeah. So I hope you're looking at the, the right thing. But uh, you, you mentioned butter, so I'm assuming you are. <laughs> yes. Um, no, you're right, man. Popcorn DAO dot finance. So it's a it's a pretty simple, sleek interface. This is the the popcorn app, the debut app that we launched uh, about a month ago, and right now the the functionality includes depositing your, your stable coins into Butter, um, and also staking the POP tokens uh, to earn uh, the POP rewards, as well as staking your GUNI and Sushi LP tokens to earn POP rewards. You can also stake the Butter LP token uh, as well to earn rewards on, on that. So we're very much, so every asset on here right now, you can earn uh, POP rewards given the, uh, the, the liquidity mining and also like linear decay and emissions that we've set up so i guess i'll just start with butter first if you if you click on butter uh, butter is our yield optimizer uh, and it allows you to earn on multiple stable coins at once so what that means is that you can so if you connect in the top in the upper right corner you will be able to deposit your three crv DAI, usdt or usdc into butter to mint butter and what that offers exposure to is a basket of four yield bearing stable coins uh one or frax rye m stable or musd and alsd by alchemix are are in the underlying right now and what basically is happening 
is that we take your liquidity, swap it into the curb liquidity pools for those LP tokens, and then direct it to yearn uh, into automated uh, yield farming for those stable coins, uh, which offer pretty competitive APY. And typically what you would do manually, uh, we do this all for you, um, and the, the cost of doing it manually is, is quite high in hundreds, perhaps even hundreds, thousands of dollars. Um, well, actually, it hasn't really been that much, but depends on depends on the 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 day in which you're using Ethereum, I guess, and for um, congestion and whatnot. So it's it's a really cool product. Um, you can then mint butter after you deposit the your your, your stable coins, and then you can actually go to staking and then stake your your butter token. So if you take a look at each of uh, the staking products on here. So there's POP, there's GUNI for USDC POP LP, t LP tokens, and then there's Butter, and this is on Ethereum. So we're actually live on four chains, but Ethereum and Polygon are the two uh, where you can access POP, buy POP, uh, and stake those tokens as well as, so GUNI is on Ethereum, and then uh, Sushi is on, is on Polygon. So you can earn quite high rewards right now it was really high in the beginning about four or five weeks ago um, but it's uh, tapering off right now so now's the time to get in if you do want to um, earn those yields so we have a dashboard um, i'm going to connect to it right now yeah i'm showing on screen here um and so mainnet and polygon are the two right i was going to ask because yeah. you can see the other in the menu there you think you're going to arbitrum next soon Actually, uh, we have tokens on Arbitrum and tokens on, on BNB chain. Um, no word. So we're, we're chain uh, agnostic, I think, like at this point in time, if you, if you are building a product or a primitive uh, like we are, especially in the DeFi space, you, we're, in, we're very much in a multi-chain world right now. And so mm -hmm. for us, our priority right now, or one of our priorities is, is to increase TVL. The more TVL we have, uh, the more we'll be able to extract from our streaming fee and then be able to donate to our charities. So um, if there is, op or if there's better yield on, let's say, Phantom or Avalanche, uh, which we're looking closely to, to, to launching on, uh, perhaps very soon, but um, it's better for not only the protocol, but for our users, um, as we can, we can, you know, create these products and asset strategies that can optimize your yield. So we're essentially in the game of, of chasing yield. And I guess going back to Butter, the, the cool thing about Butter is that it, it's a product that chases yield for you. You can just deposit your crypto, your, your stable coins, um, and earn income passively. So you know, on certain days, those stable coins are earning quite high rewards depending on the, the market. Um, sometimes it's low, sometimes it's in the middle. But um, you really don't have to worry about it because we're doing it for you. And then also, uh, I think the the main sort of narrative that we try to pitch is that this is this is a way for you to uh, to do good while doing well. And you don't really have to do anything beyond just depositing your crypto unless you want to be active in our community and steer uh, or help steer, uh, you know, which way we want to create positive global impact. Yeah, I dig that a lot, man. You're, you're sort of minimizing or you're removing any friction for folks that just want to be involved. Um, and if people wanted to, um, you know, to join the Popcorn DAO or to sort of get active here, um, obviously they could join y'all's Discord. And we'll try to maybe drop a link to that in the One Hive TV channel, folks, as well as on YouTube. Um, are there any types of contributors you're looking for in particular these days over at Popcorn? In terms of contributions, I mean, so the, the app is available to anyone right now. So anyone can get into it. They can buy Pop. Uh, they can take their stable coins, deposit it into, into the app as well, into Butter. Um, we have more products that are being rolled out as well. So we have a Synth4x uh, Butter product, um, which is going to incorporate the Iron Bank uh, non-USD stable coins into the underlying, which I believe are offering 3 to 4x higher APY on those stable coins. So our whole, our, our focus right now is rolling out this, this uh, DeFi suite that uh, we planned. And then you can also like take a look at our roadmap and see what exactly 
Um, it is that that we're doing, which is on our notion that I can share. And there's quite a lot on there. So we're gonna, we have a busy year. But um, so the Synth 4X Butter product is coming out. We have sweet pools, which are single sided uh, vaults that we'll be incorporating as well. So you'll be able to take your Ethereum, uh, your Bitcoin, and you'll be able to deposit into popcorn and earn yield on there. Um, so we're, we try to be, we have a team where we specifically assembled a team that can not only create these, these products, but also be creative at the same time and see what other protocols we can plug into. Um, cause you know, if you're, if you are in the DeFi space or just crypto in general, you, you know, every, every day is sort of like a new world. Um, so we're constantly, uh, looking, researching, seeing what we can do to offer, um, the popcorn DAO and optimize, optimize yield and as, as well as being uh, prepared for, I would say end of Q2 or Q3 when we, we've accumulated enough fees to know, to be able to donate to uh, charities because that's very much the USP. And if you, like I was saying before, it's, it's interesting that there are so many of these primitives and protocols that are coming out and a lot of them are offering essentially like the same product you know it's it's so you know De De DeFi is great because like you can essentially just fork anything just copy pasta and um you know do do the thing right but <laughs> um i think it's i think it's a big message that we're sending um and also just looking at popcorn as like a new asset class in itself something that can that can really optimize your portfolio you know taking like the whole hedge fund or wealth manager model but also applying it to uh to philanthropy um and then you know there's something that we didn't really speak about early last year and the more and more i guess uh how we're positioned for positioning popcorn towards uh the institutional side you know a lot of feedback we get is that i mean is there a way to calculate um the amount of earned protocol fees that the individual uh, contributes to in order to uh use that as yeah. a tax write-off so that's something that we can create um in the back end and help for for tax purposes i mean i guess today is the <laughs> you know uh next year appropriate time to do my thing. <laughs> yeah um so yeah i mean like it's 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 a thing that people think about um and you know i think it was the reason why we didn't talk about it because it kind of like takes away from what it is that we're really building but ultimately um that's the real world that we live in and you know a lot of people do uh use those tax write-offs to you know um, optimize their income basically oh for sure yeah no totally i mean i you know before coming to crypto i worked um in education and did a lot of i wasn't specifically in development but i had a you know foot in development for a certain period of time and yeah anybody who knows how development works that's that's the way it is and so f solving that in the technical level is really cool um i know that there's this is certainly a challenge that different projects face in, in different ways right we're friends with giveth and um, you know, different ways that people are trying to do the, the regen component. Um, but I really like the passive sort of management. Now, I just got to ask you, if people are, are taking a look at your um, DAP on, on main, that does, does, I don't want to make sure I, I, I didn't misunderstand or other people. Is there some like gas subsidy or subsidization that is involved here or, or no? Do you mean do we, can we, do we pay for gas for users? Or? Yeah, I didn't know if there was some... Some protocols are experimenting with that, right? I wasn't sure if y'all were covering any portion of the gas. Yeah. No, I think um, we're, what we try to do is, I mean, it, it would be great if there were other chains. Well, I mean, actually there are. So if you take a look at Phantom and, and Avalanche and you, and you look at, you know, like the, the blue chip stable coins on there, like with, with USDC um, and like USDT, I mean, they're offering like pretty competitive returns and, and those are much cheaper to use. So like, and I remember I was like, well, this makes perfect sense because it's, it's used to, to fuel the network, to, to pay for your gas for each transaction. And so then, you know, it's evolved into being not only a settlement layer, but this, this like blue chip asset class that's uh, forced other chains, specifically L2s, to, to build on top of it so they can scale the whole ecosystem, which mm -hmm. is great. Um, and, um, you know, that kind of like leads me to, you know, thinking like, well, where does like Ethereum sort of, sort of go? And uh, what is, what does DeFi specifically look like when we do um, have this sort of like Lego piece, modular 
uh, playgrounds that we can plug into. Given that everything is, you know, EVM or trying to be EVM compatible, uh, you know, everything is sort of just like a, like a complementary or supp supplementary piece to each other. Um, but uh, to answer your question, we don't have like a gas subsidy, uh, but we will try to create more products that exist on other chains that make it super cheap uh, for you to to do our to do DeFi with popcorn. Yeah, cool. I, I just thought I'd ask there. I mean, I saw the other two in the menu and, and just to clarify for folks that might be interested in sort of aping in on this, uh, you know, it is um, running on Polygon, but not the butter. The yield optimizer is only on mainnet, correct? For the time being? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, if you did want to ape in and you want to like save on gas, Polygon's your best bet because then you can take those pop tokens on Polygon and then stake them, which I think has like over 100% like APY. So, I mean, like I said before, it's not going to be around for too much longer, but um, yeah, now is the time to get in. Sweet. And so if, if people are you know, going over to uh, popcorn.network or they're getting involved on the, the DAP here, um, give us a flavor, man. I, mean, I know you said you might share the notion, but what we're looking out for the rest of the year. What are some of the highlights you think are, uh, you know, maybe near midterm? What excites you, man? Honestly, I mean, it's, it's, it's been a, a year in the making for Popcorn. We just released the app like about a month ago. Butter was just released. Um, so we just got uh, word from our friends at Synthetics that a contract that needed uh, to be completed, completely audited, um, done, and that helps us roll out the, the Iron Bank Butter. So uh, if you actually go into Butter right now and you hover over estimated APY, you can actually you can see the uh, the yield on the underlying stable coins, which is like roughly like three percent. So that, when we incorporate the Iron Bank tokens, um, will be much higher. And that I think is very important, especially um, if you're trying to be competitive in the space. And the fact that like Iron Bank tokens or these these non USD tokens are are becoming more um, more utilized as stable coins, given that there's a new proposal on Curve. Uh, for the liquidity pools that um, can also help us to, to issue the curve LP tokens and and kind of like simplify the the uh, the architecture for rolling out um, or the architecture necessary for rolling out the the sim four X butter. Um, yeah, I mean the sweet vault, the sweet vaults or the sweet pools that are coming out as well. Um, and then really just like I I would say I'm a DeFi degen at heart, and I think it's like fascinating that we can do. Philanthropy thing um, in in parallel. Like I think it's actually in, in, incredible and, and sort of fascinating that we're still kind of like the only ones that are going this direction, which is great because like cause we've carved out uh, carved out a niche for ourselves. But the boat escrow uh, model that Curve introduced, which took me like several months to understand, as well as I'm sure like a lot of people when it first came out, um, is something that I think is becoming, or that 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 is legitimately the or not legit, like arguably one of the most novel uh, introductions that DeFi has made, the fact that like you can, you can create more utility for a, a, a token by um, banking in this whole like boat model where it's required to um, not only lock, but the longer that you lock it, the more voting power that you have. And then, you know, what we've seen um, in the curve and like convex wars or convex wars in bribing uh different products or tokens or pools um with higher rewards i think like that in itself is something that takes a while to understand and you know people in traditional finance when they actually first hear about it it's sort of like sort of so esoteric and um confusing <laughs> but i mean this is this is like the, the fascinating part about um and DeFi is that like smart contracts have essentially like evolved into us being like it's a it's a very creative way in propping up the token value which uh you know i think it would be interesting if there were a lot less pop or a lot less uh curve emissions um given like how long it's branched out for but um and like what that would do for the curve token value in itself but uh i'm i'm very excited to to play around with that more especially as our products more products on popcorn are released so it actually will create even more utility for the pop token so you 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 will be able to lock your pop token to participate in governance 
for the beneficiary and grant selections, but also you'll be able to vote on which products on popcorn uh, will receive more pop rewards. And I think that that's super cool. You can get some off-chain people to uh, to open for strong governance. And this is like, uh, I, I again, I don't profess any technical knowledge on it, but the escrow the, the escrowed contracts are something that Billy Jitsu, who is a good buddy of ours, builder in the One Hive community here, and and you know another projects such as Superfluid and Bright ID and all this. He's he's been big on this and helped me understand um, more than I could alone. Um, it, in terms of the, as you said, the, the general utility, adding additional use case for. Um, for your governance, the governance aspect, or any any token that claims to be functioning as a governance utility token, um, really cool. Yeah, and I, I, so if people are here and they're interested in getting involved, jam to everybody here in the Discord. I know some of you are watching on on YouTube. Once again, head over to uh, popcorn network to learn more about um, the project here and popcorn finance if you want to get involved, uh, either on Ethereum or Polygon, and then. Um, it is also the case, right, that people should keep an eye maybe on the DAP for some new chain rollouts. Keep an eye on Popcorn DAO Twitter. Um, I think in the, in, in the next quarter or so, people um, could expect maybe an L2 most likely. So the, the coin's already there, right? It's just a matter of getting yeah. the deployment up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then I would say early May, so the, the next version of, of Pop. So if you, wanna, if you have stable coins and you want to deposit um, and earn yield on those, and, and much higher yield on, on those stable coins and underlying, then you'll be able to do that as well. Um, but I mean, it's going to get very interesting when we start voting. On, <coughs> we start voting on which products, uh, which products will receive like certain pop uh, emissions, um, and all of that is still like being worked out right now. It's not 100% um, finalized, but it's uh, it's it's coming in the near future. But early May, Simp Forex Butter, Sweet Pool is coming out. Um, you know, park your pop on Ethereum and Polygon right now, earn those rewards and then what you get later in the future. Um, theoretically, they should, uh, well, I don't want to say anything, but um, they will be, it will be a good <laughs> asset to include your portfolio, let's say that. Right on, and people know here. Not financial advice, but take a look here. You can, you can, be, yeah, the beauty of popcorn dies, it seems like you can be as you said, a degen at heart and, and still do, do good with uh, with your earnings here. So uh, popcorn yeah, underscore down. Yeah. One, one of our investors actually said the other day we were, we were having lunch and he's like, you know, what I think about popcorn is that we make it degenity. Or I don't even know what word he used. I think it was degeneracy or degeneracy. We make it simple. We do the degeneracy for you. We allow you to, you know, generate passive income on your crypto and then do good at the same time. So we're the degens. If you want help want to boost your yield on, on your crypto, but also feel good about your investment, um, then Popcorn is the place to park your bags. Hell yeah, folks. Um, and you can, can you do LPing on Sushi? So, so LPing on Sushi is on Polygon or on Uni yep. on Mainnet, yeah? Yeah, exactly. Um, another important thing I should mention as well uh, is we, we want to make our treasury a productive treasury. So we have a proposal that we're finalizing right now that uh, would make the POP token, I guess, a bit more intriguing given um, what we want to do with the yield that we earn on top of it. So roughly there's, there's four million that we want to put into the protocol, uh, take the yield off of that, uh, perhaps do a POP buyback program. So sort of like similar to what uh, Terra Luna does but uh, we also want to take some of that yield and donate it to charity because that's that's uh, what you know that's the reason why we, we created popcorn not because like you know we love the, the DeFi madness but also that we can like apply that to, to philanthropy. Yeah, well, how's that? I'm curious to know a little more about in terms of your outreach to institutional investors and the likes. Um, I mean, obviously, it takes a certain amount of like crypto nativity. Nativity? I don't know. That's not a word. I can make up words. It takes a certain amount of, you know, pre-existing knowledge to sort of grok the thing. But yeah, I mean, what? what uh, tell me about this. Is this because I, I also feel like the, the, the philanthropy side of it is a clear bridge to people who are not right knowledgeable about about crypto per se. Um, yeah. That's a good question. And also, for, for example, tomorrow I'm actually moderating a panel with uh, Toma Bravo, which is a huge, uh, 
huge fund that got into FTX and Anchorage. They 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 have like a three billion dollar like growth equity fund. Um, Neural Capital, XBTO, Humla, um, like very like influential like venture capital, traditional venture capital that that have been getting into crypto more and more so. Um, and you know, there's specific questions that I'm asking them about. Uh, you know, their liquid strategies, because this is something that venture capital is doing in crypto right now. So they, they do pay, pay attention what they can do with like their stable coins. Um, if they're that familiar with, with, with DeFi and, and they have the, the, the crypto laying around. But part of the p- part of what we want to want to do to make it easy for the institutional side is and we, we do now have, you know, it's a lot easier to, to buy crypto now compared to three or four years ago on the institutional side because mm-hmm. um, the most important part for them is that they need to be KYC'd and then they need to have a custodian that's DeFi enabled. So like what we can do for our institutional partners is that we can like support them creating like a silver gate or signature bank account which is the, which does the KYC for them. And then when they do buy crypto we can direct them to Fireblocks or Copper. So Fireblocks if we go on their portal we can um, this is something that we're we're looking into doing is that we can essentially like buy the license or uh, essentially get set up on Fireblocks, um, put popcorn on the portal, and when you click uh, icon, it takes you to the app, and then you have your your custody crypto um, DeFi enabled. So like that didn't exist like a year ago. Um, this is like all fairly new. So that's that's something that I'm going to be literally pitching to to um, to not only the people on the panel, but to like, everyone at this conference um, tomorrow in New York. It's called the Institutional Crypto Conference. So it's a whole lot of hedge funds, family offices, high net worth individuals that uh, are not only, if they're, if they're not already in crypto um, and like looking to get into it, they're, you know, this is a place where, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of like institutional support, so like the, the the custodians and and what have you, they'll, they'll be there, and it's uh, it's just like a sign that you know the institutional money hasn't really even like arrived yet, but like it's coming. Um, you know, we're actually going to FTX Bahamas next week, which uh, you know they're sort of I guess like the leaders in terms of like being the interface on the institutional side as well as like in the exchange world. Um, so. Yeah, it's it's either that or you create like a fund um, that anyone can essentially like LP. So uh, we're, we we think about this a lot, and like the infrastructure is much easier to set up now than than it used to be. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, it seems like a combination of building the infrastructure and having folks like you that are able to to usher in and sort of. Hand, hold people's hands is necessary to bring them across. Very cool, man. Well, good yeah. luck at the conference. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, thank you. And just like one last thing, I mean, like when we were fundraising last year, I mean, there were certain offices, like family offices that wanted to get in. Like the demand is there. It's sort mm-hmm. of like this like desperation as well. And it's all, it always comes down to like, well, uh, how are, we have to talk to our LPs or if we did talk to our LPs, like how do we even buy crypto right now? It's like, well, I'll show you. For you. Yeah, right on, and and then automate your uh, your uh, your charitable deduction. <laughs> right on. <laughs> well, very cool, man. It's been it's been great to to meet you and chat here. And um, everybody, again, check out Popcorn uh, dot Network, Popcorn Dow dot Finance, and we'll we'll keep track here with the updates. And um, maybe look forward to having you back on to give us an update when you get. Um, you know, it's one of these new uh, features rolled out. And it's uh, it's great to be able to to participate and give to good for sure, man. Yeah, thanks for having me on here. This was a, it was a good time. Sweet. All right. Well, um, again, everybody, GM, thanks for joining us today, and uh, hope we learned something here. Michael, appreciate you joining us, and we'll look forward to chatting again soon, man. Have a great week and travel safe. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Cheers, man.